it's Ro. Today I am in a very special kitchen. Dream come true. I am filming in southern France in Julia Child's cottage. Some of you may not be aware of this, but Julia Child is one of my biggest inspirations. She was fearless in the kitchen and she was so passionate about cooking and food. I thought what better way to honor her memory and her life's passions than by making a few recipes from her cookbook in her former kitchen. So today we are going to be making two recipes from the cookbook that she worked on while living here, Mastering the Art of French Cooking, Volume 2. We are going to be making strawberry sherbet and palm anna, which is a potato dish. Let's get started. We are going to start with dessert. We're going to make our strawberry sherbet first. The things you will need will be one quart or about four cups of fresh strawberries, two eggs, but we're just going to be using the egg whites, half a cup of sugar, and the juice of one lemon, which will be about a quarter cup. Now let's put it all together. The first thing that we're gonna do is cut off the top of our little strawberries. Here I've got a little cutting board, and then I'm gonna take a sharp cutting knife from right behind me. Oh, this is so neat. I just love her kitchen. She put pegboard up all around the kitchen and then hung all of her tools, and her husband Paul drew an outline around them so you'll know which tools go where. Now we're just gonna cut off all of these, and we're gonna put our little strawberries in this bowl right over here. And we're just gonna do this to the rest of our strawberries. Our strawberries are now ready, and I set a few off to the side in this little bowl. I picked out the little strawberries to be little decorative toppers, the little ones. Oh, which is the name of this cottage. It's named La Pichoun, which means the little one in French. The next thing that we're gonna do is we are gonna puree our berries. If you don't have a food mill at home, which is what this is, this is Julia's, ah, this is her food mill. This is so cute. You can just use a potato masher, mash them up, and then strain them through a sieve. But because we have this here, I'm gonna use it. I like to put just a few berries in at a time, and then get your workout on. Here we go. I'm getting quite the arm workout. That means I can have seconds. And we're done. The food mill mashed all the berries, caught all the seeds, and as you can see down below, we have fresh strawberry puree now. I grabbed a measuring cup from the pegboard, and you want to make sure that you have two cups of strawberry puree. And if we don't have enough, we'll have to make some more. No way! Perfect! Oh, look at that! I don't even know what to say right now. This never happens to me. We've got our lemon here, and on a little cutting board with a sharp cutting knife, I'm just gonna cut it in half. And then we've got a hand juicer right here. Put it right on the top of the juicer, and again, you're gonna use those arm muscles. Flex, 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 the beach is that way. Do the same thing to the second half. We've got our lemon juice, our strawberry puree, and I'm gonna take our sugar. For this part, I need a whisk, so I'm gonna grab one off of the wall. I'm gonna grab a little one, just this little one right here. I'm gonna pour the strawberry puree and our sugar into the big measuring cup with the lemon juice at the bottom. Then whisk together until the sugar has dissolved. In a small mixing bowl, we are gonna put both of our egg whites, and with a hand mixer, we are gonna mix them together for about two to three minutes until soft peaks begin to form. So we're really gonna whip these eggs into action. I'm just gonna crack my egg, let the egg whites fall into the bowl. I'm using the jiggle method. I'm jiggling the yolk back and forth, letting the egg white drip into the bowl. They mix together, here we go. This is what your soft peak should look like. Now we're gonna pour our liquid mixture into our egg whites and mix together until it's well combined. Now I'm gonna pour it into a glass pan. You can really pour it into any pan that you'd like, but I like this one. Ooh, oh, perfect. Now we're gonna cover our sherbet with food plastic wrap and pop it in the freezer for about three hours. After your sherbet has frozen, you're gonna take it out of the freezer, take off the plastic wrap, and as you can see, it's kinda separated, the top and the bottom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scoop it into this bowl I have over here, and using our hand mixer again, we're gonna mix it together. This will make our sherbet well combined and fluffy. Oh, this is also where I'm working on patience. Don't don't eat it right now, Ro. All in the bowl, and now again we are gonna be using our hand mixer, and I'm gonna mix together
together, breaking up the ice crystals until we get a smooth, even texture. Okay, now we're gonna pour it back in the pan. I just really quickly wiped it out so that there wasn't any extra residue. I'm just gonna scoop it in here and it's almost ready to serve. Mmm. Oh, yum. Put a little food wrap on top and now we're gonna pop this into the freezer for one more hour and then it's ready to serve. And while it's freezing, we're gonna start on our Palm Anna's, our potato dish. For our second recipe, we're gonna be making a savory potato recipe called Palm Anna. I am using the recipe from Julia's cookbook, but I'm adding two of my own twists. In her recipe, she makes them all together, kind of like a potato cake, but I'm gonna be doing individual sizes because I have some friends and so everyone can have their own little bite and I had to add some herbs. I found a little herb garden on the side of the cottage and I couldn't help myself so I'm gonna be adding some herbs to this recipe. I went outside and I picked some fresh thyme and some lemon thyme. So to make this dish the things you'll need will be one and a half pounds of small potatoes, six tablespoons of butter, a couple sprigs of thyme and lemon thyme, two garlic cloves, some freshly ground pepper, two teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of minced thyme, and one lemon wedge. Now let's put it all together. The first thing that we're gonna do is slice our potatoes crosswise into thin rounds. And when I say thin, I mean very thin. Thinner than a sixteenth of an inch thin. I'm gonna first cut my potato in half because that just gives me a little bit more control. And then from here, you just slice those thins. Look at that! Little potatoes! So then you're just gonna do this, keep slicing to the rest of your potatoes. Scoop up the last little potatoes. Then I'm gonna take my little lemon and squeeze the juice all over the top. Then using your hands, we're just gonna toss together the lemon juice and potato slices. Time to prep our pan, and this is where in the recipe it differs just a little bit because we are gonna be making individual little potato cakes. And in her recipe, she's making one large potato cake. So here I have have a muffin tin. I've cut these little round circles out of parchment paper and I'm gonna place these on the bottom of each muffin tin. Then I'm just gonna break off a little bit of the lemon thyme and thyme and I'm just gonna place it right in the middle and I'm just gonna do this time and time again until the whole tray is full. <laughs> The additional herb that I'm gonna be adding to this recipe is some minced thyme. Over here, I've already cut them up, so this is ready to go. And then I'm also gonna be adding some garlic because I am Italian. I like to add garlic to things. This happens a lot and that's okay. We are gonna mince these. I'm gonna show you how to do it one at a time. Take one of the little garlic cloves on top of a little cutting board and then I've got a wide, sharp cutting knife. You're gonna place this on the top. I like to do it near the base where it's the thickest and then, with the palm of my hand, where I have the most strength, I'm just gonna go pop, pop it down. Ready? On the top and the pop. Just gonna peel off the skin. Then we're gonna chop it up, mince it good. Here we go. All of our ingredients are prepped. Now you're gonna take your minced garlic, thyme, and butter, a small saucepan, and a stirring spoon over to the stove top. Turn the heat to medium and melt your butter. Then reduce the heat to low and stir in your garlic and thyme. Cook until fragrant. For me, it was about two minutes. Turn off your heat, remove from the stove, and take it back to your workstation. Our melted butter is fresh off the stove, so be really careful. You don't want to burn yourself. Now you're going to take a little pastry brush. Dip your brush into the butter. This smells so good. Fresh garlic and butter. Yum, 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 yum. And we're going to paint the edges of each muffin cup. Once that's done, we're going to pour half a teaspoon of this butter mixture into each muffin cup. Now we're going to pour our herbed garlic butter over our potatoes. Oh, that smells so good. Now's a good time to add your salt. Salty, salty! And some fresh pepper. Next, using a spatula, we are going to lightly toss. Time to divide our potato slices evenly amongst all of our muffin tins. We are going to layer all the slices one on top of each other. I like to use the smaller slices at the bottom, and as you work your way around, I like to use the larger for the top. You're gonna fill each cup a little past the top because when these bake, they sink down just a little bit. Our potatoes are almost ready to bake. 
but before, we've got to put some aluminum foil over the top. And this is so our potatoes won't brown too much while they bake. Now it's time to bake. You're gonna heat your oven to 350 degrees and bake these for about 30 to 40 minutes. Our potatoes are done baking. They're fresh out of the oven. That's why I'm gonna be using my oven mitts. You don't wanna burn yourself. This is the final step on this little baking sheet over here. I've lined it with a piece of parchment paper so that the potatoes won't stick to the bottom. I'm gonna flip it right on top of our potatoes. All right, it's time to be fearless. We're in Julia's kitchen. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> done. Boom. Yeah. Oh, I needed those back. Oops. Oh, oh. <gasps> beautiful. And just remember, there's little pieces of parchment on the top. So you're gonna gently peel those off before you eat them. But then they are ready to serve. Ta-da! Here are the two recipes that we made today. We made something sweet and something savory. For savory, we made the palm on a potato dish. And then for our sweet dessert treat, we made strawberry sherbet. This was the perfect dessert for this time of year because right now it is summer in France and it is 82 degrees. And this treat, look at this. It's so light, refreshing, yum, 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 yum. I'm gonna take a scoop of this and a little strawberry to top it and I'm probably gonna go enjoy a little cup outside. I'll be posting lots of pictures of these two recipes on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. And if you guys make these recipes, please take a picture and send it to me. I get a big kick out of seeing your creations. It just makes makes my day. It was an absolute honor to bake in Julia Child's kitchen. I am on cloud nine. This was amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. And bon appetit. <laughs>